What's going on, everybody? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Very pleased to be joined by World Series champ, Ron Swoboda. What's up? How are you? DJ, good to see you, man. Very nice to meet you. How's everything going? Everything is rolling, man. I'm, I'm about 10 and a half weeks out of uh, triple bypass That's right. surgery. Yeah, you um, feeling good? I think they fixed me up. Wow. I got my 75,000 mile checkup. I'm, <laughs> I think I'm good to go for the next 10. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> you get a little tune up and I'm sure you feel like a brand new dude in some ways. Well, it was either get that or, um, you know, have an abrupt end to everything. Right. I'll Adios take real this. Quick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a rough little surgery, but not bad, you know, and I think I had good work done and I'm feeling great. That's awesome. And you and your buddies are getting back together tonight here in the city. The yeah, 69 um, team, some of the guys are here today. Yeah, we're going downtown for Ed Randall's uh, um, uh, cure uh, fans for the cure is mm -hmm. what he calls it, but a little, uh, you know, just what you want to talk about at the age of 75, your prostate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, but he does a lot of good work, and guys need to have maybe, an awareness. It's like, maybe we'll talk about my book, maybe we'll talk 69, you know, as much as I'd love to talk about my prostate, we'll leave that one by. Well, when you were younger, you wanted to use it right. uh, rather than talk <laughs> about it, but uh, t tonight uh, we'll, we'll settle for whatever comes up. Yeah. But it's, um, it, it, yeah, it's a good night, and I'll be with our Shamsky at Crane Pool, and uh, Leon Jones is coming mm. in, one of our favorite guys. That's Awesome. So Sham was here earlier this year, I told you yeah, that, yeah. and I got to relive the whole 69 run with him. I mean, you're a 25-year-old guy. Here you are here making the catch of your life. When mm -hmm. you guys get back together, what are the feelings that come to the surface immediately? You know, we're so comfortable with one another. It's funny because uh, Ed and, uh, Sh and, and Art Shamsky and I did a little, uh, we were like the, uh, the three tenors. Mm -hmm. We did three or four gigs where, yeah, where Vegas, we went right? out and told stories yeah. and answered questions and boy people made you feel like you were such an important part of them <laughs> growing up you know it's like uh, really really a wonderful way to celebrate 50 years um, uh, telling the stories and people people really into it mm. knew what was going on great great fans uh, who hadn't forgotten you and you know 50 years you know try to figure out where 50 years goes yeah it's a long time. All good, though. <laughs> so when you were writing this book, obviously you go back into your childhood, you go through the 69 season. Yeah. What were some parts of that story you kind of forgot that you were able to brush up on again? Yeah, you know, I, I dug into, I had, I had 15 or 20 books from mm. f contemporary writers. We had great sports writers back yeah. then. And you know, you need, you can, uh, you, you need your memory refreshed on some things. Totally. And yeah. if, and if they say it better than you can say it, and a lot of them could, you quote them and attribute it. But thing you can do too, you know, online, you can go back and look at all the play-by-play -play sheets mm. uh, and, and relive every one of those games, almost every pitch, and, and, uh, and, and look at Gil Hodges, yeah. our manager in 69, look at the decisions he made and when he made them, and you realize how unbelievably adroit he was as a baseball guy. And, and, wonder more than ever right now why he's not in the Hall of Fame. I can't believe he's not in the Hall of Fame, and this is what we were talking about with Sham. Like, yeah. it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, I think, you know, what happens is the people that do the deciding are, are, are younger and younger, and they've they forget. forgotten yeah. some of these people and what they meant to the game of baseball. Um, Gil's got one more shot, I right. believe, and if he doesn't end up in the Hall of Fame, there's something wrong with the process in yeah. my book. No, I agree. Even just platooning you and Sham. You know, that was a really we big love decision. It. Yeah. You know, Sham will tell you that. Egos, but, yeah. but, you know, Sham's keeper's a good hitter. Yeah. And, and, you know, a little skinny guy with these great hands. <laughs> and he could get to the ball. And, and uh, he and I, once we settled down and I started doing something, he had a pretty good year. Once he, he got his back straightened out, he had mm. a pinched nerve right. in his hip early in the season. When he came back, he came back strong. And, and I was the one floundering around. But into August, there was a point where I got to play and mm -hmm. I got to do a few things. And he and I became a strict platoon in right field. And, and we produced almost 100 RBIs, which back in that day is not too bad. You're taking that, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, two for the price of one. Yeah, hey, whatever <laughs> works, right? Yeah. You, you know, I'm reading your book, and I'm reading about your story growing up in Maryland, and the fact that the Mets are playing the Orioles in the 69 World yeah. Series. There's something poetic about that. The fact that you it made is. the play against Baltimore. Did you realize everything that was happening in that moment, that it would be such a grand moment that you'd be talking about the rest of your life? You know, I had played um, as an amateur 
in Memorial Stadium where the Orioles played. I had worked out with the Orioles, right. wearing their uniform as a kid and, and before I signed with the New York Mets. So I'd been in, in Memorial Stadium, but when I ran on the field in game one of the 69 World Series, I felt like all of that history, all of those memories, all of those thoughts just crowded my brain. Mm. and. It was, uh, it was a little uh, daunting, and, yeah, and, I and I ran out there nervous as heck in the outfield, and of course, Don Buford, first hitter up, hits a ball that I really should have caught. Mm. And I do everything wrong. I work my tail off to become a better outfield. They're getting good jumps on the ball, locating it and getting to where you needed to go and catching this darn <laughs> thing. Well, I did everything. When I look back at that now, I look lost. I look like that. Uh, robot in Star Wars, mm. you know, um, three <laughs> um, um, PO or something. Yeah. You know, I I I I'm, I never get back. I I, t I get back late to the fence. I jump. I don't have the ball located. Mm. It goes for a home run, and I thought it was all on me, you know. And I come back in the dugout, and I'm yelping about it. <laughs> Eddie Cranepool, who's a New York guy, you know, he's got yeah. that New York, you know. He said something pretty sharp to me, like "Shut the you know what up" and. <laughs> catch the next mm. one and you know what he might I as well have said it to the whole team because we caught everything after that yeah I mean especially this play here to think where you were from game one to game four yeah and to make that play in the ninth inning like just take me back you've thought about this moment so many times but when you still think about making that catch what is the first emotion that you think about is it oh my gosh I got to catch this ball or like I can't believe I caught that ball you know uh, when when your eyes move at the speed of thought, mm. you know, and and um, I saw that thing off the bat, and I had worked with Eddie Yost taking thousands of ground balls, right. and I felt like I had become a better outfielder, worked at getting a better jump on the ball, but when I go into City Field, and you can look at that play on the, in the Mets Museum mm. there, as long as you want. Yes, <laughs> whenever you want, as long as you I want. I watched it three, four times, <laughs> and I'm like... <clears throat> Good grief, how'd I get there? Because that ball is falling quick. Like I watched I'm, it this I'm, morning, and I'm like, I can't believe you made that play. I made a good jump, but I thought 95%, maybe above that, um, on the way to catching mm. it, I thought, I'm too late. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I took the best line I could take. Um, it turned out to be a good one. Uh, it hit me right in the web, laid out full on my backhand. And, and you know, it's one of those plays that... I think you, you, you never realize how, how juiced you are, how excited you are on the moment of, of you're in a World Series. And that was at Shea Stadium yeah. where I was more comfortable. Mm. And, and I felt like, you know, I, I quoted Browning, the poet, who mm -hmm. said it better than I could, if, you know, you're, if you're, you're, your reach uh, it doesn't exceed your grasp, um, what is a heaven for, you mm. know? It's like, I made the one play, the most graceful play, and graceful in my name didn't appear in, <laughs> in the too many sense. sentences at the same time, but this was my graceful moment as a player, and uh, how ironic, with all the work I put in on line drives and ground mm. balls and stuff, that it came at a key point in a World Series in a game we had to win, really. Yeah.